Russia has begun ceasefire talks with rebel groups in a number of Syrian provinces. According to a statement released by the Russian Defense Ministry, AFP reported February 24. A uh, joint U.S.-Russia plan uh, calls for a cessation of host hostilities in Syria beginning February 27th but does not include militants from the Islamic State or Al-Qaeda-linked organizations. The statement said Russia has opened a coordination center in Syria and has begun negotiations with representatives of rebels operating in Hama, Homs, Latakia, Damascus, and Daraa. Even if Syria's uh, government and rebel forces can, agree, can, can be uh, persuaded to abide by a ceasefire, continue operations against the Islamic State, and al-Qaeda ensure that war will rage on in Syria. And frankly, in the end, I believe that's exactly what's going to happen. I think that you're going to see, like I said, an umbrella agreement that's going to take place, which will include Iran, Syria. Uh, I'm sure uh, Yemen will be involved as well. The modern Arab states, Israel and the Palestinians, and of course the United States, Russia, and all the actors that are involved in the region uh, in this Syrian conflict. And I think the initial uh, ceasefire will turn into a, a peace accord or a confirmed covenant, whichever you like to call it, in the name of getting uh, ISIS uh, out of the region. So they'll try to bring about this peace accord that will uh, try to put all of their time and energy to be focused on ISIS. But I think in time, just the sheer number of, of uh, actors that are in Syria, for which I don't believe any of them are leaving, and especially Russia, or Iran, uh, that will uh, bring about a, a major conflict. You know, I think there's one factor that a lot of people simply haven't taken into consideration, and that is that oil prices, if they continue to remain low, and there was just a report that came out uh, from Saudi Arabia that they have absolutely no intention of lowering their uh, output at this time. So prices are going to continue to be low, and probably even lower, because right now many of the major players have decided that they would freeze their uh, output but the bottom line is, is they're at uh, top capacity already so that's not going to change anything and as Iran gets uh, further and further in online and uh, brings about more oil into the uh, market that doesn't serve to bring the oil prices any lower uh, in the near future as well and frankly that is killing Russia's bottom line in fact let me read from an article that I just got it says Russia's limited financial resources continue to hurt the Kremlin's ability to operate as it has over the past decade. High oil prices were largely responsible for, for skyrocketing economic growth since uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin's government took over in 2000. Prosperity enabled Rus uh, Moscow to spend uh, liberally on its military, its e economic development, and more subtly, its loans to countries in exchange for influence. But uh, oil prices have fallen, domestic industry has slowed, and the West has placed sanctions on the country that have soured investor sentiment, creating an economic crisis for Russia. The Kremlin must now make painful decisions to uh, keep its economic af economy afloat, and everything is open to cuts, including foreign loans. And you know, I just seen a, an intelligence report on Russia that they, just this, in this month alone, they are going to have to make another five percent cut. They made a ten percent cut last year and the year before, but just this month alone, they're going to have to drop another five percent. This is getting completely out of hand for Russia. But the fact that they cannot give out loans any longer really puts a damper upon uh, who they can control. And finishing up on this article, it says, If Russia neglects its allies, it risks a breakdown in relations or another country replacing its influence like the United States. However, years of wild spending have uh, forced the Kremlin to uh, pick and choose the countries it assists and how much it can spend without breaking its finances. Well, we'll have to see how that works out in, in the future. Frankly, I, I believe this uh, problem with Russia is ultimately going to turn out to be a major problem. I simply can't see how this, uh, these low, low oil prices plus sanctions against Russia cannot develop into something that's going to bring about a major war. And as we've learned over the years, we know that the one thing that causes uh, oil prices to skyrocket is when oil producing countries get hit by war or uh, even the threat of war. And, you know, normally I wouldn't say this, but I really believe that we are heading toward a soon rapture of the church. You know, I don't look for Russia to ever leave Syria. 
you know, I think their next future stop is heading toward Israel and the Gog and Magog war. And I, frankly, I don't think it's that far away. I think that this is going to become the Syrian, the Syrian civil war and the, and the uh, ceasefire, I believe, at some point, is going to turn into some type of confirmed covenant. That will include Russia and will include Iran, the United States, and all the other actors that are involved in uh, this uh, theater right now. And I think that will culminate in a peace with many, and I believe it will include Israel and the Palestinian state. And I think that the, the, the world will listen to what uh, King Abdullah of Jordan does, did say back uh, when they went to Munich and said that if uh, the two-state solution would go a long way to solving the uh, uh, ISIS problem. And certainly don't forget about the fact that France is pushing Israel to uh, come back to the, the uh, peace table and to uh, set up some type of agreement or they're going to recognize the Palestinian state. And it should also be noted that in, in the next month or two that a, an organization known as Apartheid.com is going to try to p paint a picture of Israel to be exactly like South Africa. But, of course, the truth of the matter is they're nothing like South Africa. They're a very democratic nation. In fact, they're the most democratic in the Middle East, with many uh, Arabs living in uh, Israel, in fact, somewhere around 2 million, where they are free to be in politics, go into acting, uh, be a part of society any way they want. And you certainly would not get that in places like Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, or any of the Arab world. But getting back to my original thought, and that was, uh, we're looking, I believe we're looking at a full-blown uh, move toward Israel and the Palestinians becoming a uh, separate state and some type of umbrella agreement t taking place very soon. And I certainly can't see a positive outcome with this, uh, with the increased and continued sanctions against Russia and low oil prices. I really believe that something's going to have to change within the next, well, within two, two, 2016. And frankly, I look for the rapture of the church more than I ever have in this year. Now, certainly, I don't know the day of the rapture, but I do know that the Bible says in Hebrews 10:25 that uh, we should come together more as a church body as we de as we see the day coming. So the Bible says at some point in time we're going to see the day coming. There will be a generation that will see the day coming. And frankly, I have never seen such a situation in which uh, you have the Gog and Magog players in Syria. You have Israel and the Palestinians on the verge of going back to the peace table. And a major player in uh, negotiations such as France who are threatening against Israel that they will recognize the Palestinians if in fact Israel does not move forward with some type of peace movement. And at the same time, we have... Uh, others in the world who are trying to paint Israel as an apartheid state. Frank, there's a lot of pressure upon Israel. And, you know, the nail in the co coffin will be that the United States will one day, I believe, uh, turn their back on Israel and say, listen, you have to recognize, you have to let Palestine have a state or we're going to no longer stand with you uh, in, in, at the UN. Now, frankly, I don't know that that's going to take place this year. As I've said, this is an election year, but it could uh, very early on into 2017 take place. But frankly, I simply can't see how these players who are located where they are are simply going to pick up their toys and go back to their countries uh, in the next year or so. I frankly don't see Russia going, uh, leaving Syria. I don't see any of the other actors in that area, such as Iran, or any, any for that matter, even the... Uh, modern Arab states leaving the area of Syria, but I think that they're going to end up staying there as some type of a monitor or control group. And ultimately, I believe that that's probably going to be the downfall and will lead to this great world war the Bible talks about in Revelation chapter 6, where this uh, nuclear war, which I believe, it says the Bible says, will uh, uh, take the lives of one quarter of the world's population. And it very well may, uh, may all start with what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 38, verse 10, where an evil thought comes in the mind of this leader who will come down against Israel uh, in the Gog and Magi war. That very well may spark that war. Well, as I've said before, one, the one thing that scares me the most is the fact that, Israel, or that Russia continues to languish and it just simply doesn't seem like it's going to get any better financially for them. And with the United States and the European Union continuing to sanction Russia, it doesn't look like 
there will be any relief anytime soon. And certainly it won't be the first time that uh, uh, one country has attacked another country due to sanctions. So with a combination of low, very low oil prices and sanctions not only from the United States but the European Union, this nightmare could go into another year with, for Russia. So this is definitely something I would keep my eye on to see exactly where this is going to head. I'd keep my eye on how the Civil War uh, ceasefire is looking, where this uh, new peace process is going with France, and if Israel does back out of it and uh, decide to let uh, uh, France uh, recognize Palestine as a state uh, after all. And of course, low, low oil prices in the apartheid.com, uh, that would be taking shape next month. That's some other things that I would look at. But those things alone, I believe, are some things that ensure that 2016 is a prime month that we as Prophecy Watchers should be taking a look at. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. The Bible says that it's appointed that a man wants to die. And after that, the judgment. You know, 150,000 people die every single day. The Bible says the vast majority of them will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Savior today. Ask Him to forgive you your sins. And believe that He died for you. And from this day forward, uh, live for Him. And you Christians, I do believe that it's coming very close to us uh, being taken in the rapture of the church. Now you can leave uh, your friends and family members to the fate of those who are left behind. And certainly they're going to tell your friends and family to take the mark of the beast and to worship his image. Or you can get them a copy of my uh, free Tribulation Period Survival Guide, which is, uh, you can get, get it through the link uh, that's right at the top left-hand corner. Or you can get a copy of a paperback version of it. Then go down to the description. But whichever you choose, you need to get this into their hands as quickly as possible. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.